So I wanted to make a video uh, because I wanted to cover some details about the Unify system and some of the real world problems we ran into it. So demos are always great. We want to see what challenges we face when we started deploying these. Now the challenges aren't huge. There are more annoyances, but there's actually good workarounds for these challenges and annoyances. So when you're looking at a lot of small business and VR systems, you got to think about the fact that most of the clients want it persistently viewed on, let's say, a TV. So we mounted some TVs for these. Now, because like the one that I'm going to be showing you right here is a smaller system with only six cameras, it didn't really make a lot of sense to have two systems in there, one to view and one to record. I mean, that's nice, but you can do it on one machine. They don't recommend it, but it can be done as long as the machine is fast enough to do it. It doesn't have a problem because Chrome can be a little bit burdensome running because one thing that they may not tell you about these Unifies is viewing a lot of cameras requires a faster processor to do, not the recording of them. I showed in my other video how little processing power is taken for the recording, but there's a lot of processing power because because it's all HTML5 for the viewing. But there's a few things you can do to fix some of the issues you ran into. So um, on this camera system, this is the default live view. Now, this is actually running on the same machine that's recording and it's working fine because the machine's spec for it. It's a nicer i5 with eight gigs of RAM, which is plenty for recording six cameras with a Western Digital Purple drive. Now we've been putting in separate boot drives versus uh, the recording drive. Uh, that way it boots up really fast off an SSD, then records to the uh, four terabyte drive. Small SSDs to run Windows, fairly inexpensive. So the next thing we ran into was they wanted it to auto launch every time it rebooted. Well, there's a solution for that. And I'll post this little script in here. Uh, we put in this little tool called unify.vbs. And what this does is on startup launches Chrome, waits, then says, go ahead and press enter. And that's because if you notice here, we have it set to 127.001.7080 not 7443. Now the reason for setting it to that is because that is the non SSL port that you can view the unifies on. Chrome has a hard time with self-signed certificates. And one of the problems we're running into when it's using the SSL is when the stream changes, Chrome will time out. You'll actually still be viewing the cameras, but it'll give a 404 error. And I've seen a lot of people complaining about it. And this is the easy solution around it if you're viewing it locally. And it's like I said, 127.001.7080. And that is the port number slash live view. And what this script does in startup is uh, kicks off Chrome, opens up the live view page. Now you can, there's a push keys or send keys for uh, typing in the username and password. It's Chrome, it's local on this computer. We went ahead and did the not recommended thing, so to speak, in terms of security, but we saved the password in the browser of the NVR. The reality is if you have physical access to the NVR and the password, you've got everything anyways, because you're in the same room. But so we have the username and password saved. We wait uh, a few seconds after this gives enough time to launch. We wait and then we send the enter key to go ahead and log in and it defaults right to the live view. Now, challenges with the live view. We're gonna go ahead here at live view and we're gonna edit the view. Now this helps a lot and I'll tell you, it's, it's a big problem that we didn't expect. This client is a one-to-one, -one, so they have their uh, one computer with one TV and are viewing it, maybe another TV. But as it turns out with some of our other clients, we're gonna click this here to low, and we're clicking on this little camera icon that's on each of these. Low, 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 and low. But by doing this, in lowering the streams here, it one, reduces the burden on there. We didn't change what it records at. We only changed what it was actually viewing at. So on the view, it's now set to a lower stream because by default, it actually sends the full stream over here and then switches back and forth as needed, depending on that. But by keeping the stream at full, it was creating some real issues uh, because we have a client that has nine people watching their cameras. And it turned out it was a bigger burden than expected to uh, do that. And it was really taxing the machine. And it's even a machine that's dedicated for recording. But by doing this, uh, lowering the stream on the view for each person that's logging in and viewing, it reduced the burden on the machine. It's funny that the camera's recording we're not too hard on the machine, but once you have nine people watching the same system on a gigabit connection, it didn't quite saturate the connection, but it really 
did a big number on the processing power it takes to send those streams back out. So we weren't sure you know, why the client kept having problems, and this is one with a dedicated server, not this particular client, but what solved the problem was changing that stream to be low so they can view it. Now they can change it back to high if they have one particular camera. And I think there's a lot of excitement when we put all the, we put like 30 cameras in for the client and there was a lot of excitement uh, to watch all the cameras all the time. Now each department is only watching the cameras they care about and they've edited down the views and the problem kind of went away, but it was kind of unexpected. Um, I just didn't realize that everyone wanted to watch all the camera streams at once. And once you burdened the system with all the cameras recording and then all the people at their individual offices all viewing the cameras, um, it really created some errors that were really hard to trace. And a lot of them were out of memory errors because of the streaming service going in and out, getting burdened so much. But between the VB script and then using using a non-SSL internal port, that kind of solved it for us in terms of the troubleshooting we had. I mean, we were really worried about all the problems with it, uh, but that kind of sorted it out. We did notice on the Windows machines, uh, they do perform better if you do things like turn off the volume shadow copy on the larger drive, uh, specifically the, the West Digital Purple Drive, because we're booting off an SSD uh, and then heading over to the Purple Drive, we turned off volume shadow copy. Um, and it's more risky, but you can turn off Windows Update as well, seeing as these machines are sitting there, and that avoids them randomly rebooting. Or you can just run this on a server. Now, it, the program does start up by default, uh, but there's something you have to be concerned about if you do have it on. Make sure you have the reboot time scheduled uh, to be less inconvenient, because uh, when Tuesday update day comes and the computer reboots on Wednesday because it loaded some updates, sometimes clients get a little upset. So make sure you uh, are managing or thinking about that or do like we've been doing and a lot of them, we run Linux on them. Uh, and that seems to solve some of the problems because we can control the update schedule on the Linux servers a little better. So that's just my short video of little problems we found and easy ways to troubleshoot it. Use port 7080 internally or locally if you're viewing it on the same computer. Uh, think about how many people are going to watch it at once because uh, I don't have an exact ratio, but I will tell you it certainly uh, was a lot of bandwidth use and a lot of memory usage more than expected when all these people started watching it once. The last thing is that VB script, which I'll just go ahead and post the in in the comments here uh, or in the description, I'll post the VB script that we use. It's really simple, uh, and no big deal there. So you can uh, po copy that in, put it in startup.vbs and it launches Chrome and logs in as long as you have the password saved. You can enhance the script. You can find uh, a few people in the forum that did a few more things like typed in a username and password all with a VB script. But we found just saving it to be fine. Um, and the multiple stream issues, set them all to low for the viewing. You reduce the workload on the server. You reduce the bandwidth necessary. And it also will reduce the uh, processing power that Chrome needs. Because one of the couple of users, um, which I guess it's not horrible, it led to some computer upgrades for us. They were trying to view it on really old computers that they had. And it turns out that it doesn't render well on like, you know, nine year old computers that they probably should have replaced anyways. Um, but they were using them for basic needs. But watching cameras on there, you do need a faster computer. I do recommend just for the viewing portion being an i5 system. Uh, it actually takes more horsepower to view the cameras than it does for the system to read record them. So that was it. That was my quick Unify update that I wanted to cover. Um, other than that, we're really liking the systems uh, once we got those little issues sorted out. Um, also, by the way, if you're running into the cameras being unmanaged and some of those issues, it's all related to that. Uh, all those problems went away by uh, fixing these issues. It stopped all the other errors that was like cameras timing out and stuff like that. Well, as it runs out of memory, it does random things. It doesn't necessarily tell you unless you're looking for out of memory. It does random things like tell you that camera's unmanaged or that camera's decided to turn off. And you thinking you have a camera problem. Nope, it's all related to the MVR and a workload on it. So thanks for watching. If you like the content here, like, subscribe. If you have questions, comments, uh, let me know. And hopefully this helps you solve some of the Unify problems if you're ever seeing the same ones we are. Thanks.